The head of Russia's foreign intelligence agency, Sergei Narishkin, has claimed that the Crimean bridge remains a high priority for Ukraine in its attacks on the peninsula using Western weapons. Speaking at a meeting of the heads of CIS security agencies in Astana, Kazakhstan, Narishin noted that the bridge, which connects the peninsula to the Russian mainland and has repeatedly come under Ukrainian attack, is likely to be targeted by British-supplied Storm Shadow missiles. He also pointed out that Ukraine has been using other Western-supplied weapon systems to attack the peninsula, such as when Kiev's troops used American-made ATACMS missiles in June, killing four people, including two children, and injuring over 150 at a beach in Sevastopol. Narishkin went on to recall that CIA Director William Burns had previously told the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee that Washington's military aid to Ukraine is meant to enable Kiev to inflict tangible damage on Russia, which includes penetrating strikes on Crimea. Burns thus voiced the old Anglo-Saxon maxim to cut off Russia's access to the warm sea at all costs. Narishkin said, Earlier this year, Ukraine's Volodymyr Zelensky admitted that Kiev really wants to destroy the bridge, as well as other Russian infrastructure. Since the outbreak of the Ukraine conflict in 2022, the bridge has been targeted with missiles and naval drones on numerous occasions, but most of the attacks were repelled. However, in October 2022, a blast caused by an explosive-laden truck managed to inflict extensive damage to the bridge and took the lives of three people. In July 2023, a drone boat attack also damaged the structure. Ukraine has called for an international tribunal to order Russia to dismantle the Kirsch Bridge or the Crimean Bridge, connecting the temporarily occupied peninsula with mainland Russia as part of its efforts to restore free navigation across the Kirsch Strait. The request was made during oral hearings at the Arbitration Tribunal in The Hague. Occupied Crimea functions as Russia's military base, acting as a springboard for Russia's offensive into Ukraine's southern mainland, consolidating Russian forces and enhancing operational capabilities. Between 2017 and 2020, Russia constructed the Kirsch Road and railway bridges linking its Taman Peninsula to occupied Crimea to secure a vital logistics route to the occupied territory. Oksana Zolotaryova, deputy agent of Ukraine, emphasized in her final speech that dismantling the bridge is the only way to restore passage for ships from all countries that have used the strait in the past and ships that will use the strait in the future. Russia is a signatory to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Zolotaryova stressed that merely telling Russia it is violating international law is insufficient. She urged the tribunal to order Russia to cease its illegal actions, provide guarantees against future violations, and eliminate the consequences of its unlawful activities. This includes returning and revoking registration of illegally seized Ukrainian drilling rigs in the Black Sea. Israel Defense Minister Yoav Gallant has not ruled out the possibility of attacks on Iran's nuclear infrastructure facilities. Everything is on the table, he told CNN. Israel has capabilities to hit targets near and far. We have proved it. We will respond to the Iranian attack appropriately. We will not stand by and neither should the international community, he emphasized. Iran's recent attacks on Israel have given Tel Aviv and Washington a trump card of military response, but their possible clash with Iran will lead to a serious regional and eventually global crisis, Abdullah Agar, one of Turkey's leading security experts, told TASS while commenting on the latest statements of Iranian leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei and the situation in the region. Khamenei explained that Iran would be acting patiently, resolutely, and in case of an attack will retaliate, but in a way and at the moment it sees fit. He emphasized that the threat was not only to Iran, but also to other countries in the region which must act together. Whether Khamenei's statements will stabilize the situation is anyone's guess, but it should be remembered that Iran could not but carry out the recent attack on Israel, although by doing so, it gave the US a trump card for a military response. If the Americans decide to respond, a serious crisis will be imminent in the region and, in the long run, in the whole world, Agar said.
In his opinion, Israel has received clear reasons for a strike on Iran together with the US, which until now supported Israel only in the context of the principles and concepts of defense. If they correctly calculate all the risks of such a strike on Iran, they will be able, for example, to minimize Iran's nuclear potential, which the latter is believed to be going to use as an important element of the negotiations process and maybe even as a weapon. There have been speculations to this effect, the expert said. But at the same time, such an attack on Iran is fraught with a very serious conflict in the region. It will be a completely different war. It will encompass extremely important areas, energy resources, sources of energy production and transmission, and trading routes. The Iranian naval guerrilla doctrine will be activated. This crisis will unfold, mostly in the Persian Gulf and the Strait of Hormuz and in the Red Sea. There is a risk of a fierce struggle affecting all world trade and global oil supplies. Both sides are now assessing the risks involved. Agar noted.